<laughs> Welcome back to uh, our, our garden in a very, very wet October here in the middle of a Covid lockdown. It's been chucking it down with rain for weeks and weeks. Seems like eternity. And I've managed to grab an hour or two where it stopped raining for a minute or two uh, to have a look at our calder lines which are developing uh, quite a common problem here in the UK which is a kind of a, uh, a rain induced rust on the leaves. Let's go and have a closer look. So there we go, and if you can you can see that these yellow spots there all along the lower leaves of these uh, these cord lines. Um, and you can see some evidence on top of the leaves as well, but typically um, with this fungal disease, which I'm assuming is a rust, um, you get these kind of orangey yellow uh, markings underneath the leaf. And this disease, this sort of disease, is particularly prevalent during damp, damp weather. So uh, this year we had a lot of it in early spring after a very damp February. We had a lot of leaves turning like this and uh, I came through and you can see the remnants of the leaves that I cut off back in probably March or April this year. I prefer to cut off leaves off these cord lines in the spring and leave as many leaves on as I can over winter because it helps protect the, um, the slightly softer centre of the plants from any cold weather we might have. But I just wanted to show you really this, uh, this is quite a common problem here in the UK because of our, our wet spells of weather we get and bearing in mind that these these cord lines uh, naturally are, um, there's another one over there actually you see that one there uh, with a seed head on him they are um, from areas quite dry areas like uh, Australia and, and New Zealand that would be their kind of natural uh, habitat um, so Although they grow very well here in the UK, we are inclined to get some of these, these problems here. So what do we do? Well, some people just sort of leave them and ignore them and you, they do seem to grow through if you look higher up the plant. Yeah. You can see that the new leaves are nice and green, but I, I don't like to see them and I always feel that the more of these yellow um, uh, marks that we have on the leaf it's likely that they're releasing more of the spores uh, of the fungus which will just reinfect so I like to remove them uh, at least once a year and I'm going to take a few off now let's have a look Ooh, do you know what I do get myself in some pickles I'm <laughs> stood up against a slightly wobbly pair of ladders about eight foot up in the air um, not holding on to the ladders using one hand to hold the camera and the other hand to cut my left hand to cut some of these leaves. I'm just getting some of these old leaves out of the way. Um, I did mean to fill out a risk assessment before I did this but I just didn't quite have the time to do it. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, I would advise you not to do as I do but to do as I say and that would be to be very careful. Make sure that somebody is holding on to the, uh, the base of the ladders for you and make sure that you're not uh, overreaching. Uh, read up on how to do a risk assessment on ladders. Um, <laughs> whatever you do, stay safe. Okay, so now you can see this kind of exposed um, leaf here with the uh, with the disease on. I'm going to get back in there. Some of my scissors. There you go. And another one there. Come on. There we go. Now as you, you may know if you've seen any of my other videos, I, I do like to um, uh, recycle and compost as much as I can from the garden, but um, because these leaves are potentially carrying disease, I'm going to put these straight into the, uh, the council uh, bins um, to be taken away. Um, I don't want to put them um, in my garden where they might reinfect the, um, the cord lines. So, 
that's what we'll do. We'll take off some more of these uh, these leaves, take off the worst ones, and um, see if we can reduce the chance of uh, any reinfection. And as I say, probably the best time to do this would be in the spring, but I'm just removing some of the, the worst ones. There's another one there that you can come off. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, just removing a few of the worst ones here before we go into winter, but making sure they've got plenty of green leaves there to protect the, um, the heart of the plant. So there we go, that's what we do. And um, I suppose it's possible that you could spray with a fungicide. I've never tried that and uh, I'm not sure how effective it would be. And most people now are trying to avoid the use of chemicals. So just removing the source of the reinfection, which are these uh, infected leaves here, by removing them, we're reducing the risk of, um, uh, of uh, the disease reinfecting. As usual, a high potash um, feed uh, would be recommended in the spring because potash encourages kind of stronger cell walls, slightly more resistant and resilient plants, whereas a high nitrogen feed will encourage lots of soft growth, which is more vulnerable to these sorts of diseases and also pest attacks. So yet again, I find myself recommending potash um, for these plants. And the other advantage of the potash is that you get more in the way of flowers, which is which is why we've got that bunch of uh, seeds there from the flower that was there this, um, this summer. I'll probably go around and collect those seeds in a couple of months time and see if we can grow some more from them next, uh, next spring or summer. So there we go, I hope that makes sense, I hope that's of some use, that's how we collect the seeds, sorry, <laughs> that's how we um, try and control this uh, fungal disease on cordial line palms. There we go, that's much better. It took about 10 minutes to trim away those leaves. You can see the stumps there. There's still some yellow spots on a few of the lower leaves, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. So it looks much better now for when we go into the winter and then I can double check and see if it needs another trim in the spring.